Now, if there is something we all do, it's judging. <laughs> right? Am I right? I think we do. Now, don't, don't worry. I'm not talking about, you know, the serious kind of judgment. I'm talking about those little judgments that we make every day. You know, like when we see someone's outfit that doesn't quite suit our fashion taste. And we look disapprovingly and think, uh... <laughs> No, they didn't just go out in public looking like that. <laughs> or, or we probably think, do they, do they dress in the dark or something? See, that's, that's judging. The truth is, we all do it. Because our brains, our brains are naturally wired to form opinions as a survival mechanism. The human brain is constantly processing vast amounts of information. And to make sense of the world, it categorizes and evaluates this data quickly. When we're meeting someone new, for example, we often quickly form judgments based on appearance or body language or how they speak. We also judge someone's trustworthiness, and that is crucial for building relationships and ensuring our safety. In a professional setting, we judge colleagues or employees based on their work performance and or how well they collaborate with others. We make judgments all the time, but while this instinct is helpful, it can sometimes lead to snap judgments and bi or biases, or to judgmental attitudes that are more about criticizing or condemning rather than understanding or evaluating constructively. So we just need to be careful that we don't cross that line. In today's reading from 1 Corinthians, Paul gives us a friendly reminder. Let's leave the judging to God. When Paul says, therefore do not make any judgment before the appointed time until the Lord comes, he's saying that it's not our job to go around issuing verdicts on others. God's got that covered and is way better at it than we are. Besides, we see only the surface, but God sees the heart. God sees everything. You know that coworker you find unfriendly, that, you, that coworker you can't stand, is probably going through a bitter divorce or maybe their child is, is very ill. So let's not be quick to judge. That man who seems to uh, always be tardy, never shows up on time, is probably working two jobs to be able to feed his family or pay the rent. That irritating driver in front of you who's driving way too slow in traffic, well, maybe they just lost a loved one and is grieving terribly and is unable to concentrate. So let's not be uh, judgmental. So what should we do instead of judging? Well, how about we give people the benefit of the doubt? You know, let's assume they're doing their best. Let's encourage them, support them, maybe even help them, or sometimes just, just let them be, just let it go. Don't get so worked up. God is not looking for faults to judge. He's looking for the good to praise. So again, let's leave the judging to him and focus on being the best stewards we can be. Stewards of love, kindness, and grace. So the next time you see someone with what you think is an atrocious outfit, don't resort quickly to criticism. Admire instead their confidence and their sense of adventure in doing something so different and bold. Because when we release the urge to judge, we embrace the gift of seeing others as they truly are, with their own battles and triumphs, allowing compassion to flourish. Thank you for participating in this production of our virtual mass. Your presence means so much. Every day, so many parishioners connect to OLPH through the 
digital ministry. The digital ministry is one of almost 80 ministries supported by the parish. That's why your support of the parish is crucial so we can continue to have the resources to fund all of our ministries that touch the lives of many. Thank you for watching, continue to watch, and thanks again for your support.